The business district of the town of Seaforth, located within the municipality of Huron East, includes splendid examples of late 19th century architecture. Such building heritage reflects the center's former wealth and importance, and is representative of everything worth conserving in small town Ontario. Seaforth's historical commercial blocks are visually integrated, and while exhibiting uniform design, possess individual detail as well. The use of distinct and richly modulated brick and tall windows in upper stories creates visual interest and ascribes a flourish to an otherwise homogenous panorama. This subtle insertion of individuality does much to convey to us the structural taste of the original builder and owner, and the composition of the town's vintage streetscape is explicitly brightened by the towers of its major public buildings. Unfortunately, in recent decades, this unique slice of history has been compromised and its form weakened by the introduction of modern structures and by the modification of facades and storefronts. Right into the rescue is local businessman and property owner Pete Claver. Traveling in Europe at Pete Claver's interests in antiquated architecture and eventually led to his investment in old local buildings. Growing up in Huron County has allowed him to develop an appreciation of the history of the area in 1999 saw the beginning of Claver's property acquisitions in Seaforth. The architectural changes made on Main Street in the 1960s and 70s were like many things from that era. They aren't around anymore, he says with a smile. But what's left is an odd hybrid of old and not old. During his acquisition years, Claver fortuitously crossed paths with the late Debbie Somerville, a woman with style as well as an interior decorating business. Somerville's decadence in the country operation included decor items, furniture, and paint. They were soon collaborating on restoration ventures, Claver renovating, and Somerville choosing colors and painting design. Somerville had been born and raised in Seaforth and possessed an awareness of what her hometown had been while recognizing how old could become new again. Drawn to design as a child, she naturally became involved with interiors as a profession. I so enjoy my work, she once said. Along with helping people and getting to know the customers, the design field allows me to be into a contemporary look today and a more traditional one tomorrow, whatever the client's taste. Somerville's care and concern were part of her service. She didn't just sell interiors, she designed them based on visits to the customer's home, personalized consultation and insight. The Somerville Claver Alliance was a good one, with each of them bringing their specialized skill set to projects of the heart. Claver's belief that you have to dress for success influenced his property development. He looked beyond the nondescript fronts and clumsy melange of architecture when he bought bargain price buildings with a vision of what they could become. Refurbished, run-down buildings, reinstating their look and roll, and returning them to some semblance of their past glory meant he attracted good tenants, while simultaneously improving Seaforth's business district and neighborhoods. And so what is the restoration process, as developed by the former agriculture owner, manager, and history buff, who had an obvious talent for renovation? First comes finding photos of the buildings, as it once was, as it was initially constructed. Then there's the examination and assessment of its present condition and what's left of the original structure. Based on what can realistically be restored and renewed, design work follows, and eventually the reconstruction and installation of architectural detail by Claver and his staff. The final touch is, of course, the paint, and that's where Debbie Somerville would shine, choosing just the right colors to create the look of a day gone by while adding an up-to-date richness to the facade. And as luck would have it, in the basement of the nearby business, Tulip's Dental Center, a bit of original frontage was found, a beautiful wooden corbel, which is an architectural component that projects outward and upward from a wall supporting a horizontal member. Claver and company fabricated corbels from the old model and added them along the friezes and dentils to produce a new entablature of various buildings in Seaforce Historic Business District. A typical example of Claver's Somerville touch is found in the Robert Scott Block at 63 and 65 Main Street. Built in 1869, the then three-story structure included two retail areas on the ground floor, offices on the second, and living quarters above that, all with a steady succession of short and long-term tenants through the years. A 1905 fire badly damaged the upper floor after which it was mostly removed and its windows bricked up. This commercial block purchased by Claver had been poorly altered and then stood empty. The storefronts for three years and the second floor apartments for 25. A project has to be worth renting, I started on the place before the ink was dry on the bill of sale, recalls Claver. It was a mess. I immediately began with scraping, sanding, and painting the outside. Part of the inside walls in the south building were plastered. Some were original brick. I took them right down to the lovely old brick. 
Next came upgrading and cleaning the interiors. The space next door to the north also required considerable work, inside and out, and when it was completed it had new floors, ceiling, up-to-date wall treatments, new fixtures, and a new lease on life. The eventual tenants in the Scott block were Somerville, who moved her design store into the south portion, and Timmer's Outfitters, whose owner Dwayne Forrest, decorated the north half with all manners of kayaks, canoes, tents, and outdoor gear, everything needed for paddling or camping. The freshly renovated block has been transformed into perfect storefronts on a revitalized section of Main Street that reflected another era. 55 and 57 Main Street, housing Claverone Sally's Closet 2, and its neighbor, Tulip's Dental Center, got a new look as well. An inside-out facelift set off by beautiful heritage paint colors. Makeovers were catching on. Claver friend K.J. Ichu, owner of Ichu Insurance and Financial Services at 32 Main Street, was next to upgrade with Pete Claver's help. Via structural cosmetic improvements, vintage paint, and restoration of a beautiful stained glass window. Claver's largest restoration is the dignified three-story commercial hotel at 84 Main Street South. This version of the commercial hotel was constructed to replace the original brick one built in 1866 but burned down on April 17, 1895. The new hotel opened to the public on October 21, 1895 and particularly serviced those traveling by railway, located one block to the south. The architecture of the three-story structure is simple and robust, featuring horizontal detail linking the window arches and sills of each level, with pilasters delineating four sections vertically across the facade. The raised precast lettering on concrete panels stretched along its front proudly state, Commercial Hotel, to this day. With refurbishment of its interior and exterior, the reincarnation of the commercial hotel as planned by Claver will consist of 16 apartments, updated, renovated, and warmly welcoming residents once again, along with strengthening the integrity, form, and function of Main Street. Pete Claver takes pride in having the buildings he owns look good, in having them reflect their history, and it's contagious, as evidenced by other enhancements happening in the town's historic business section. Dressing for success has become an architectural fashion statement in Seaforth.